Handy. Ja. Hello, my name is Andy, I am the Brit in Hungary, and once again I'm building IKEA furniture. Seriously? Yeah, it's that time of year, um, I hate this time of year. Um, I, and what I always try and do between about January and March, I always try and find something to keep me really, really busy. Um, so it just makes the summer come a lot quicker. Uh, at this time, uh, we've decided. Um, that the whole property needs a massive facelift. We, we bought this place about five years ago and um, we got it sort of like half decent to, to work in and etc. Um, but it's starting to look a bit tired now. Um, we're going to sort of um, try and rejuvenate the place a little bit. Yeah, I've had a lot of people ask me like, what do you actually do, Andy? Um, and I don't think I've ever actually explained what I do here. I'm not like some sort of eccentric millionaire. Um, well, I'm eccentric, but I'm not a millionaire yet. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just explain what I actually do here, if, um, if you didn't already know. So we bought, uh, not the whole building, just the, the top floor, like the, the roof part, the attic part. Uh, and it goes around the corner about the same, so it's kind of like an L shape. Uh, 270 square meters, and it was far too big for what we needed, but it was so cheap, uh, we couldn't let it go really. So. The, the first plan, uh, the, the language school was already running, but it was in a really small flat and we needed to sort of get a bit bigger. So um, the first thing we did was uh, set up the language school and that took up about half the building and uh, we didn't know what to do with the other half. Um, and then we had this great idea. Um, we turn it into rooms, into accommodation. Uh, and that's what we did. So yeah, uh, basically, I'm a teacher, a self-employed teacher at the language school, I teach English. Um, I'm also uh, a hotelier, which I never thought would happen in a million years. And I also work um, in a teacher training college, which is just over there, the other side of the roundabout. Um, so I'm a, I've got a proper job as well, which is a, a teacher trainer. The first facelift job I did was um, the reception. I'm not sure if I've got any pictures of the old reception, but the transformation is big huge. Hey, look at this. Come in. Welcome. Ta -da. Oh, yes. This used to be um, just an outside part, wasted space. Um, but I've sort of built the walls and put the door in and made like an extra large reception. So yeah, the, the wall used to be here and there was an awful like big industrial door um, and it looked bloody awful. So we've made it look very professional and much bigger. Yeah, so reception, tick, we did that. Um, the, the next thing is in here, this is what I'm building the, the IKEA furniture for. It's um, all a bit tired really. This, this furniture was, kitchen stuff was second hand and we bought it about four years ago. Um, so yeah, we're gonna re revitalize, change the tiles, change the floor, perhaps even change the color actually, go white. And the good news is we, we actually bought all this stuff for 30,000 um, about five years ago. And we sold it today for 60,000. <laughs> so ka-ching. So yeah, very pleased. Sunday morning. Awesome progress. We've had um, about three hours on a Sunday morning and we've ripped everything out and it went remarkably well. So onwards and upwards.
yeah so I finished that on Sunday the 15th of January and it was rented out on Monday the 16th so there's that can potentially sleep six people in there there's two bedrooms and there's like a double sofa bed as well at the minute there's three guys um, uh, three contractors they're working in the town and they're working here until June and they've rented the place Monday to Friday for the next six months so Kerching, get in we've got three more rooms um, we've got these two very simple rooms um, this one sleeps three people there's a double bed there and a single sort of sofa bed thing um, and yeah these are this is the cheapest accommodation in town and they're absolutely rammed full um, you know most of the most of the year and we've got a very similar one next door so yeah room one um, similar to the one next door really um, this sleeps four there's a double bed a sofa bed and there's another bed we can get in here if four people want to stay and again like the little room next door this is really really busy and we get lots of people in here um, it's so cheap um, because uh, there's no sort of ensuite it's just uh, the bathroom is, is around the corner so it's a walk to the bathroom and the shower etc and there's a there's also a shared kitchen next door So this is room four. Um, this is the, the newest room. Um, and this has been the biggest revelation of our three and a half years in the sort of hotel business, really. This was um, a funny shaped room, like a storeroom with a big like cupboard just here. And um, I hated it because we couldn't do anything with it. It was such a weird shape and it was, yeah, it was just useless. Um, and I had this mad idea. I just turned it into a tiny little sort of ensuite flat. Uh, and again, uh, sleeps a double bed and there's a sofa bed there. You can get three in here. We've had four in here before, which was quite cozy. Uh, and I, I made this sort of nice, cozy bathroom. Um, one of the ham-fisted buffoon gorilla guests managed to rip the towel dryer off the wall. So I'm in the process of fixing that. Yeah, that's, I, I say revelation um, is because this has been, without doubt, our most popular room. Um, since I built it, I built it uh, Mar between March and April last year. So it's been sort of working, earning its keep for about 10 months or so. And this has been virtually full every day since we opened it. Um, so what it's inspired us to do, um, those, those two rooms I showed you, they're very, very cheap and they're very, very popular, but they don't actually make us very much money. This, this one, and the, the big flat is the one that makes the money. Um, so we've decided to take the plunge and we're going to make those two rooms uh, into hopefully two more of these little ones. Um, so we'll have like, th you know, three of these to rent out, well, this year. Um, we're still sort of, well, I'm still trying to work out how to fit everything in. Um, but if I manage to do it in this little space, um, I'm sure we can do it anywhere really. But I've got a, again, I've got some photos of, and video of what this used to look like. And I'm so pleased. I just love coming in here because it was just so satisfying building this place. And I just like to come in here sometimes and think, I did that. <laughs> but anyway, this is how we did it. So look at the space we've got. Now I've taken that, um, that huge cupboard out. Uh, yeah, we can go all the way. Pretty much all the way to where I've sort of laid the laid the planks out. Um, so we're going to make this the master bedroom. I just imagine a nice double bed in there. And we're still sticking with the original plan of having bathroom, little bathroom, sort of ensuite just here. Uh, the biggest headache I've got for the whole project is connecting the sewer um, to the sewer, which is. Oh, it's probably about 10, 12 meters that way. Um, good morning. I've been, been knackered. I've just carried about a quarter of a ton of cement and sand up the stairs. Anyway, I've had about four or five bit and bobby kind of days in here and we're making some progress. I'll, um, I'll show you around. 
So the biggest job was getting all the plumbing in, all the waste pipes and the sewage pipes. Um, there's a, a waste pipe there for the kitchenette, main sewer pipe. Um, started building the bathroom out of um, Eton bricks, they're called here. Uh, so, shower, got the drain in for the shower, got the plumbing in for the toilet. Um, and this is basically where everything's going to be. So um, I'm not going to put the toilet in until I've tiled the floor, but possibly going to put the sink and the waste pipe in today. Um, we're going to have a little towel heater on this wall here. And there's not much space, so we're going to have a, like a, a slidey bathroom door. The biggest job has been sawing this floor out. Um, I've split it into four sections. Uh, and I've concreted one section two sections and we're going to try and do this section today um, I have absolutely no issues at all with the weight of the concrete because can you see those absolute whopping oak beams that the whole building is sort of supported by and built on so I have absolutely no problem building walls um, I put a couple of layers of bricks in yesterday just to sort of for effect to see what it'd look like but yeah it's looking pretty good uh, there too uh, whew, what else yeah there's the shower base uh, and yeah well today like I say I'd like to get the that base filled in give that a few days to go off and I can carry on building the wall and put another couple of layers of, of bricks in for the bathroom and possibly get the sink and the waste and the, the pipes all in um, we will see but yeah, it's all going marvellously. I've, <laughs> I've jinxed it now, haven't I? Anyway, I'm going to crack on. Yeah, I never, um, I never imagined myself to be a host or a hotelier. Um, it's just one of those weird things that happens, it usually happens in my life, really. Um, and it's really nice, actually. It's, um, it was a nice little business, obviously. Um, but it's, you know, it, it's hard work. Um, there's that mad spurt of activity like when guests check out and you have to clean the rooms and everything and, and get everything ready for the next guest um, but I've, yeah I've learnt a lot uh, yeah I've especially learnt how badly trained uh, how badly toilet trained most men are oof yeah when you've got to three, clean three toilets every day you soon um, yeah you soon realise so um, yeah, yeah guys just sort of concentrate on what you're doing please um, yeah we're um we, um, we, we sort of pride ourselves on being not cheap, but budget accommodation. I mean, all people, all, well, I've travelled a lot, and all I ever wanted was like uh, somewhere comfortable to sleep, clean and quiet. Um, and that's what we try and do. Um, and um, we're, we're right next to the Euro 6 long distance cycle path, which goes um, all the way from France, from the Atlantic coast to the Black Sea. And it comes basically right past this place. Um, and we get a lot of cyclists in the summer. And it's really nice to meet them because they've got lots of sort of um, adventures and tales to tell you. So um, I quite like that. Um, unfortunately, uh, we're on a lot of those uh, websites like booking.com. And uh, what happens is um, because people are so mean or thrifty, to be polite, they, um, they, on the filters, they, they tip the cheapest option, you know, display the cheapest one first. And it's us. It's us. It's always us. And uh, yeah, they don't bother to read about us. They don't bother to be, read about our facilities, where we are, what we do, uh, what we have got, what we haven't got. Uh, and they come here expecting the Hilton. They're expecting, I don't know, you know, a butler, valet service, 24-hour room service, gold-plated taps, um, you know, car hire cash machines uh, yeah, yeah yeah and um yeah and, and when they get here they're so disappointed that, that we don't have those things they leave us absolutely scathing reviews um for for stuff that we haven't got that we've never said we've got and if they bother to read the accommodation description they would have known um that we don't have them but it's, it's our fault uh, and I, I used to get really really angry um, but now I don't. I just take it in my stride, and I just, I really, really, I've, I've got really sort of basil faulty and cynical, um, and I really, really enjoy doing like crushing responses um, to the those stupid 
uh, moronic reviews we get from these failed wannabe hotel inspectors. And uh, I'm just, I'm just downright, downright rude, and I'd sort of, you know, I'd insult their intelligence and just try to make them feel as silly as possible. Because it's just not fair, you know, it's just not fair. Like, learn to read, learn some social skills. Yeah, fortunately, about 70% um, of, the, of the customers we get now, they're, they're repeat customers, they've come back, um, which is the best sort of vindication of all, really, that you're doing something right, I suppose. Um, yeah, some of, some of the comments we get are hysterical. I think my, my favourite ever, um, there was a guy, a French guy, um, and he left a review saying that the manager, me, my English was terrible. He, he got a laugh, really. Um, yeah, his English was shit, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a couple of. This is yeah. This is what you have to put up with. This is a couple of the reviews we've had recently. This was um, a couple of weeks ago. We had a German couple stay here. Uh, it's always the Germans. Sorry, Germans. Um, yeah, they were they were really fine. And like every day, we said everything okay, anything we can do for you, everything okay. And it was oh no, it's beautiful, lovely, thank you, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and they left. Um, and then they they left a, re a review, the most bizarre review. Um, the first thing they said, their first impression was that the staircase was too echoey. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll call an acoustic engineer. Um, they said uh, the walls were made of cardboard. Um, there was a smell in the toilet, and um, the other guests were very noisy. We said word, by the way, they were a Christian family here on a pilgrimage. Um, yeah, this is my reply. Um, firstly, we met several times during your four-night stay, and you didn't mention any issues. It's a bit silly to mention it in a review after you've left. A slight correction: the walls are built with bricks. A two centimetre layer of EPS soundproofing and 10 millimetres of plasterboard, not cardboard. I know, because I built it myself. The toilet wasn't smelly before you arrived. It's not fair to blame us for your digestive system. And finally, we are not responsible for the behaviour of other guests. Perhaps you should have been braver and asked them to be quiet. Yeah, this, this next one was from the autumn too. Um, uh, yeah, a couple arrived, um, I think my, my dad used to call them 10 bob millionaires, you know, and they were common as muck, and they arrived in a big Mercedes and fur coats and all that kind of stuff, and as soon as I saw them I thought, they're going to be trouble. And um, yeah, they left us a scathing review, um, it wasn't luxurious enough um, for them, yeah, and, yeah, and they, they criticised everything. Um, uh, yeah, and it really pissed me off. And this is my reply. Um, okay, you're obviously not very smart. Let me explain. You wanted one of our luxury apartments. So for some incomprehensible reason, you booked our cheapest room. So this is one of those cheap rooms I was talking about, the cheapest room in town. This is Lord and Lady Muck, you know. We clearly warned you in the email that we sent that the budget room you booked does not have a private bathroom in big letters, but you still kept your reservation for some inexplicable reason. You arrived like the king and queen, but for some reason you were shocked to find that you had booked the cheapest hotel room in town and it didn't have a private bathroom. And it was obviously our fault. Um, a few tips for you. One, in which fantasy land do you think you can book an apartment with a bathroom for 8,000 forints, which is less than 20 quid, by the way? Seriously? Please take A, literary classes, or B, buy new glasses. Uh, learn some social skills. If you hadn't behaved so disgracefully, we would have returned your money, which we would have done, actually, if they hadn't been such arseholes. And finally, in 2023, we're going to introduce a preliminary IQ test for guests. I only wish it would have been in service at the time of your booking. Kind regards. Yeah, like I say, most people are okay, but they're just some twats. Anyway, I've got two hours to get this fixed. I've uh, got to know what these tiles are made of. I think it's kryptonite or something. I've just had to go and buy a new, a new drill bit. Anyway.
I'll tell you a couple of things about this game as well that's quite funny. Um, you know those things you do when you check into a hotel room? Um, yeah, like you didn't bring any shampoo with you, so you use all the hand soap in the shower um, and, and in the bath. Yeah, people do that, and it really gets on my mammary glands. And the other thing people do is, is that I do this, everybody does this. When you get into your hotel room, the first thing you do is turn the fridge on to maximum. Um, yeah, and I, ooh, it drives me mad. Every time a guest leaves, I have to turn the damn thing down. <laughs> anyway, that's enough moaning. Um, my name's Andy. I am the Brit in Hungary. Onwards and upwards, everybody.